Hey there, this is Derek Murphy. Today I was inspired when I got up to work on my book, um, Bookcraft, partly because while I was going to sleep last night, I had a bunch of ideas that I wrote down on my iPhone. I tend to produce better words when I don't have the whole messy manuscript and I'm just kind of in my head. Um, and so what I did was kind of write out some new introduction matter. And this morning I copy pasted them into my uh, manuscript and because I'm a master procrastinator, rather than actually working on my book, I decided to make a video talking about me working on my book. But I think it might be useful for you if you write nonfiction, because a lot of writers have a nonfiction project kind of like this. Um, it's a whole mess of collected notes and stories and ideas without a lot of cleaning, and it can get difficult to edit it all together. And what I usually actually tell people is start with the introduction because in the introduction you're going to figure out who this book is for, what are the main benefits, what are they going to learn, um, what's the hook, what's your hero's journey story, all of the stuff that goes into why should people read this book, what's the unique value. Once you figure that out it's going to be a lot easier to hone your book into one project. You need like a tight theme if you haven't figured out your subtitle or your title yet. Um, that can really help, although in this particular case I worked on the cover for a long time and the subtitle, I got some feedback, and I ended up with this um, subtitle and title. Now that I've chosen a title I can direct the theme. It's all going to have the same content anyway, but now that I kind of know the overall theme of the book, um, I can make sure I'm pulling it all together. So far this is basically a collection of notes that come from a bunch of the videos I've made about the writing craft, um, which I think is really good content. The problem is people don't really have time to sit through and watch all my videos, so I really want to make it in a book form. People have also been asking me, recently I put out some guides to plotting fiction and outlining templates to write fiction, and people were asking me if I have something like that for nonfiction, um, and I do have a lot of really valuable advanced tips, but there's no structure that's universal for um, everything. There are ways to structure your individual chapters, there are ways to decide on a structure, and I'll talk about some of those um, in this video, but there's no like chapter by chapter do this exact thing. Um, however, like I said, there are some really clear rules to writing your preface, your introduction, and your first chapter. Um, and I have an article on Creative Indie that's about write and grow rich because what Napoleon Hill does in that book is really classic writing. Um, he tells you like in the first several chapters or pages, I forget if it's an introduction or preface, whatever, I broke it all down on my um, blog post, but basically he doesn't tell you what's inside the book. He tells you that all these successful f famous people did one thing and you will learn that one thing somewhere in the book, but that one thing might be different for you. So no matter who you are, if you read this book carefully, you will discover the one thing that you needed. It's kind of brilliant. Um, the idea is you want to prove with examples that success is possible for most nonfiction. Um, you want to do a little bit of branding and you could say name dropping. It's really credibility boosting. Um, there are three ways to boost your credibility by adding personal anecdotes, by adding um, famous quotes from other people to show that you've read in your field, and also to add in data or proof because that kind of shows that you know your facts. So even little things like throwing in a few quotes from famous people can make people listen to you more and take you more seriously. Um, because you're not just talking about your knowledge, you show that your knowledge is broader. And I'll do this more than I have already. Um, I've collected, and in most of my nonfiction books, um, what I start out doing is just adding little chapters. So down at the end, like I have, and you can see even I've got typos in here. Um, the other thing I would be doing relatively soon, um, once I have like a rough, rough draft, then I usually start fixing the formatting a little bit just so it's easier on the eyes and I kind of know what it's going to look like. Um, this is easier once the cover is finished too. Um, so I might 
very quickly add some spacing parameters around my titles. Uh, later I will also be going back through and adding breaks. I haven't done like the size of the page formatting or anything. This is just a place where I'm going to dump quotes until I find a better place for them. I might have quotes at the top of every chapter, which looks pretty good in, in fiction and in nonfiction. Um, or I might just put them, you don't want to just have random quotes at the top of your chapter unless you're using that as part of your uh, theme or argument or um, to predispose readers to have a certain idea in mind while you go into your discussion. So I actually had to go back and check in my bestseller blueprint course for some of this information because I thought I had copy pasted it into my manuscript, um, but I guess I didn't. So just to make sure I've got everything I need, I'm going to go back into this forward introduction and preface to check out what's in there. Um, and this is actually what I was looking for. So this is what the introduction or the preface needs to do. And I also made this big list out of this case study. Um, which I'll show you as long as I'm here. This is a case study I made a couple years ago breaking down um, 11 cool things that Napoleon Hill does in Think and Grow Rich. And I've made a list like this. So this is some of the stuff where it'll be really effective in book form so you can read the book and, and learn this stuff without having to watch the whole video. I don't have all this stuff memorized so I still have to go back and check my resources. I also made a list of cool language to use from Think and Grow Rich, uh, which is really powerful psychological language that you can also include um, in your introduction. So I'm really excited about this stuff because a lot of this is stuff I've talked about for years. Um, I've put it out on videos or in courses, but it's really still not common knowledge and most nonfiction authors don't do any of this. And it's frustrating because people charge tons and tons of money to help nonfiction authors write a book that helps their business. Um, by tons, I mean 20000 or $40,000. And often that's just a few rounds of, of editing and a cover, and they don't even get the cover right in most cases. So these are really powerful things you can do when you're self-publishing or writing your own nonfiction book to make it much, much better. It's definitely things that I haven't done in all of my books, um, so I want to be careful in this book to make sure I do things better. Um, I'm actually going to copy this entire thing. Okay, never mind. Um, stupid me, I already had this in the manuscript because I took all the information from my courses and put it... That's what makes up this outline already. Um, so this content was already here. Forward introduction preface language to use. Um, I just got confused because this is the actual content in the book um, and I was wanting to refer to it when I was re working on my outline. But now that I know it's there, um, I could drag and drop it closer. I'll probably copy and paste this under the video or something so you can check it out or link to that um, blog post where I might have some of the same information. You can see what I'm trying to do is clean up the introduction part because um, the way that I broke up my course was first focusing on fiction. I have all this fiction stuff and then focusing on nonfiction down here, which is not a terrible way to break it up. It's actually kind of weird to have a book about both fiction and nonfiction. They really should be two different books, but I wanted to try to combine them into one. And the best way to do your timeline or your organization for your book is to have it linear where it's like this is where you should start and this is where you should end to walk them through that whole process. So I think part of my challenge was there are some things that are familiar with fiction and nonfiction and I'm not entirely sure I want to break it up into two halves of the book if I'm repeating content even though those readers will probably read different things. And another thing I did kind of recently was I made a list of six things that every book needs, um, which I'm pretty proud of. So these are the six things I think every book needs. I think these relate pretty well to fiction and nonfiction. So my first instinct was because this book didn't really have a strong structure, um, I thought I would structure it out using these six points, which is 
okay because some of this is really different like drama and structure are really different really important steps so each of them could have their own um, chapter but some of these are a little shorter so like the resolution or the credibility of the story they're more guidelines or points that are important to put in your book but I'm not sure if they're full chapter materials and one of the other things that I wrote um, in the blurb and blurbs are really tricky to get right I don't love mine and I'll probably go back and revise it later um, but at the end I put that it includes a guided 12-week plan to writing your best book yet I pulled that because this summer I'm doing a 12-week book writing summer camp Partly because even though I really know a lot of stuff about writing books, um, I felt like my organization or my structure was lacking. And so while I've talked about this in the past, I haven't really, it's been kind of like when I, when I have a new idea, I chronicle it by making a video or writing it down, but I don't really codify it in a way that I, that I need to if I'm going to actually put it into a book. So the camp was just to kind of help me get more clarity and so now that I'm doing this 12 week program I came up with a totally uh, different way of organization which looks like this and this is mostly for fiction so I would have to figure out you know this isn't obviously going to work for nonfiction but I might split up my nonfiction side of my book um, and make something similar I take out the months obviously but this would be like a 12-week program to plotting writing and editing your book which is what the book is basically about so if i want to use this i could actually just use this whole thing um, there's also some really good benefits in here i'm obviously going to have to edit it quite a bit to make sure that it fits you know that the language is made for a book and not for a course I've also noticed for example this is how I originally drafted out these six things but um, based on the way I'm doing my course I actually think you would start with the story then you would go to the structure the drama would be after because the drama the conflict the intrigue it's really important to know this stuff before you start writing but it really gets fixed in the revision and the editing after the first draft is done so I don't want people to worry too much about this stuff until the structure um, is down so uh, there are different ways to map out your book um, if I had to summarize all of this I think my best resources are actually about what to put in your preface and introduction I showed you a lot of that before um, that's really good content that's gonna help me make a stronger book and I kind of need, like I needed the theme, I needed the tagline and the promise so that I figured out which direction my book is going to go. Um, and I have that already now that I figured out the title. Um, Bookcraft, cut the fluff, keep the magic. So there's a, the main theme is kind of a play on words about instead of witchcraft, it would be bookcraft, comparing the art of writing to the craft of writing. Um, the difference between the magic of exploratory creativity versus the work of skill and knowledge. I had a whole bunch of subtitles and I had to really pare them down because it was too much and they didn't look good on the cover. Um, there were more keywords that I've avoided because I feel like this is a stronger... Um, I can put the keywords in my, in my subtitle or in the preface with the benefits. Um, but with your subtitle, you really have to hit the major pain point. So the main point of this book is to write books readers love, not good books. I don't want to focus on, um, and I say that in a way that might sound surprising because everybody thinks, of course, they want good books. But the point is that what most people consider good books, they're talking about what they think is good writing, um, and they usually think successful books or commercial books or people that books actually uh, books that people actually read are not good and they're writing books they consider good that nobody else wants and that's a huge problem because most books aren't successful so I always focus on readers first um, there is a methodology for writing books that engage readers it's not that hard 
to learn, but most authors refuse to learn it. So in this book, not only do I have to teach them to do it, um, I have to make them want to do it. And I have to really be careful to explain why it's okay to, uh, my original tagline was how to plan your book without killing the magic. Cause a lot of authors resist planning your book, but it's actually a lot more than just planning. So I have from first draft to final polish. I think the, um, the plot, write, edit, those three months, that's a pretty strong structure. So I'll probably use something like that. And that's great because in the beginning of the book, um, like I said, I definitely want to have my structure mapped out because that's going to make it a lot easier to finish organizing and moving all the content around. You can either have a topic based content where you have like eight important steps to whatever, and they don't necessarily have to be linked or linear um, or time sensitive. You don't necessarily have to do one first. Then you could just have like, these are the eight critical things or the 12 critical things um, in almost any order. But if you can turn it into a step-by-step -step process, that's always useful for readers. So what I basically want to do in this video is apply some of these tips that I already have inside the book to the book itself. Um, and it'll get harder when I start moving into organizing the individual chapters uh, and figuring out exactly what structure I'm going to go with. But some simple things like the preface explains the why, the introduction explains the what. These are really simple, actionable tips that I can use right away. And that I can also try to make sure I include um, some of this and some of the languages in the beginning as well. Right now, you can see the beginning of this book is a mess. I have um, many intros and notes to myself, possible organizations, more intros. This is a lot of content that needs to be organized into one clear preface and introduction, and then maybe the beginning of chapter one. I'm actually going to set a minute uh, timer for 30 minutes and see how much of this I can structure. This is sometimes really challenging to take a bunch of different ideas and notes and put them together. But it's a lot easier when you do have some kind of a template or an outline or, or a process. Um, so you know what to put in what place. So it's actually been about 15 minutes and I haven't really started yet. All I've been doing is trying to fix my organization for my preface and my introduction. I did show you already, I have made some big lists, but, um, it wasn't very clear what I should do in my preface and introduction, even though I have the preface, the why, and the introduction, the what, um, with some, you know, really basic one sentence lines about what to include. I didn't have a structure or, organi or an organization of the content for the actual preface, which I kind of wanted. So I don't know universally if this is right for every book. Uh, but I'm going to talk through some of the choices that I've made, which I might use for this book and why I made them. So I started out putting the share or the vulnerable story here, um, which I may actually move, but the idea is you want to hook them, that you want to hook their attention. Um, and it's easier to hook their attention faster if you start with a story with an anecdote, with an interesting scene. This is also where you would, you'd hook their attention. You would build some credibility, knowledge, empathy. Um, and a hero's journey basically means, you know, I started off having these problems and I really felt terrible and you really exacerbate the feelings and the emotions you have around the problem so that you can show that you have been in the shoes of the people that you want to read the book. You could also hint at some big benefits. I wouldn't promise big, re big results um, in my books, but I would casually name drop that some authors are doing tremendously well. They've probably read some news stories about people making millions of dollars off Kindle. Um, so they already have that idea in mind that maybe they could do this. And you want to bring that out a bit. You also want to show some success that you've had and you want to start getting them thinking about the kind of results that they want. So rather than 
just telling them this book is awesome and they should read this book for a bunch of benefits. You want to try to encourage them to visualize the benefits they actually want because you probably can't guess exactly what they want. You could also make some informed guesses. So let me ask you, why did you pick this book up? It's probably because, and then you can talk about their current state, the feelings, the problems, um, anxiety they have around whatever their issue is. And the other one that's important is personal motivation. Why you, why now, who cares? So this goes back to the attention, credibility, knowledge, empathy. Um, why are you so motivated to write this book? And why are you the person that has the right knowledge? And can you actually help me solve my problem? Um, which you can do with case studies, proof, and testimonials. And then I also have this little copywriting thing here problem agitate solve, which just means you, in your why, in your preface, you point out the problem, you kind of dig down deeper and really show that you understand what they're dealing with and that you know your subject. Um, you could throw in some credibility boosting or quotes like I talked about earlier, and then you solve and you show not exactly the process, not the content, you don't get into the details yet, you just show that you have solved this problem um, with results proof. So you don't get into the how or the what yet. You just show, you know, I've done this. It's possible. You can do it too. So that's what I currently have, but I'm already kind of doubting myself because I also say later in the book that people, like you want to get their attention and you want to let them know they should listen to you pretty quickly. So that's a pretty strong choice um, to put early. I'm not sure that it belongs in the preface. I think a preface is probably shorter, kind of like a warning, get their engagement. It's a little bit of a screening. So you say like this book will absolutely help you, but it won't help anybody. It'll only help people who blah, blah, blah. And then you're basically trying to get them to raise their hands and say, yes, I have this problem. Yes, I want results. And then you promise that if you were one of those people and if you work hard and read the whole book, you will see the answers. So really simply something like this. If this is you, this will help. Kind of just promising results. I also took all of this language that I picked up from Napoleon Hill, and this obviously needs to be rewritten, and some of it um, I probably won't use. For example, I had this one about ability. Anybody can do this without any special skills or knowledge. Um, which personally I resist against because I think writing is hard and people can do it, but they have to work to learn it. Um, on the other hand, I do think this book gives a lot of easy to implement strategies that are probably better than a lot of what else is out there. But the interesting thing is if it seems hard or overwhelming, they won't do it. So if you can tell them it's easy and they do the work and they learn it, like you're not really... It's something, it's something that I've had trouble wrapping my head around, but you're not really lying to them by saying anybody can do it. You're giving them confidence that they don't have. So you're transferring confidence by saying, um, you believe in them, anybody can do it. The truth is those people with confidence who think they can do it and actually do all the work will see results. So you need to make it seem easy so that they will have the confidence to do the work and see the results, even if it's hard, because only those people with that desire and confidence actually do the work and read the book and do the exercises. So I did one more thing down here, which is chapter one. Um, today, I only want to try to clean up all of this content, like I mentioned earlier, hopefully figure out exactly what my organization structure is going to look like. Um, which when I'm writing the preface of the introduction, there should be a point where I say, this is what you're going to learn in this book and this is how the book is organized. And once I have that, um, I'll be more prepared to write chapter one. So the reason I'm already doubting myself, I kind of mentioned earlier, and it's kind of a weird problem, but um, people don't care about you or your story yet. So in the beginning, you really want to focus on them and use psychological language that pulls them in focus on the, the problem, the benefits, the solutions, the results, the proof, testimonials, um, all of that stuff. 
before you really go into a vulnerable share or a story because they don't care. They don't want to be told a story. They want to know if this book is going to solve their problem. But it is also important to at least show briefly that you are an expert in your subject, that you've done the research. So probably I may not actually start with my share of vulnerable story here in the preface or introduction, um, but I will probably find a way to talk about why this book is important to me, the problems that I had, some of the stuff that I, I mentioned before casually, or I will end with like a, a short biography or something because I feel like, and what I've seen a lot of other people do, I feel like chapter one would be the place where you actually switch into active storytelling, um, where you start with an anecdote, where you really hook their attention and that's because in my plotting resources, I, I also have a template for um, writing chapters, uh, which looks like this. And I won't necessarily use this in every chapter, but it's not a terrible formula for organizing your content for nonfiction books. And you can see that I would start with a story because people just pay more attention to stories. You want to put pictures in their minds and make them feel things which you can only do with story. You can't do with information or content. Um, you don't want them to get bored because even if you have an amazing content and this book is just going to be filled with really useful content, you have to keep reminding them of the purpose, why they're reading this book, um, why they are excited about their stories. So you kind of have to keep telling them stories to keep them hooked and feeling things and seeing pictures in their brains so that they're more engaged and so that they learn more faster and easier because if they get bored or they have trouble paying attention to all of this great content, they're not going to assimilate it. They're not going to take action and see results. So that's why I'm tempted to start chapter one with a story. Um, it doesn't have to be my hero's journey or my personal story. That could be in the introduction or the preface. And it depends how I organize things also because this could be purely pragmatic. I could jump right into keyword research or um, figuring out your topic or your book or what's the best book you want to write or the title or the subtitle. That's, it'll probably be something like that in chapter one. Um, and I don't want to just dive into the how to practical stuff too quickly because even if I've really hooked them with my preface and introduction, I still want to have a really strong opening chapter. Okay, I've procrastinated for a couple hours already making this video. Um, and as you can see, writing nonfiction can be a little bit messy. So I hope by the time I finish this book, I will also have organized all of this content um, into something a little more concise and tight that you can use for your own nonfiction projects. So I'm actually another hour into it. I've made a little bit of progress. This is a little bit um, frustrating. I've said that writing a book is the most difficult task the human brain can do and that's mostly just because you're trying to assimilate so much information and figuring out the organization, um, which again is why putting the organization first and mapping out your book before you start can save you so much time long term. So I've made a cleaner version and I have to redo all of the actual organization of the content later because I've decided I will probably use that 12 week step-by-step um, -step plan and then I've moved everything down to where I think it should be so in the preface I've decided I'll add in a little bit of this stuff and some of the language um, but I'm mostly just taking a few paragraphs that I've written including a lot of the stuff that I wrote last night on my iPhone which was kind of a response from somebody else's Facebook post and it overcomes one of the major challenges and I don't want to keep talking about the same issues over and over again throughout the book. Um, I want the book to get into the practical stuff pretty quickly. But the main challenge is that everybody wants to learn to write better and they want their book to be good, but a lot of those same people don't believe that writing has any rules. Um, so this is a really kind of emotional, powerful punch to the gut where I say most authors are not looking for education, they are looking for permission, permission to do it their way because there are no rules permission to do what's fun and easy because nobody can predict the market, 
permission to not get better, to not worry about reviews for reception, to not think about plotting or structure, because there's no one way to write a book. So the central claim of this particular book is that there are rules that can be learned, but most authors just aren't going to want to do it. And so then I get down here where the good news is there are rules that will definitely help you. So the preface is just the main promise of the book, which is that unlike every other book that talks about the art and the inspiration, this one is talking about clear, easy to use um, templates, tools, rules that you can follow to write better books. But also, like I said, it's a little bit confrontatory. It'll probably get people's hackles up, um, which can be a little controversial. And I know that some of my resources piss authors off because it makes them emotional and they get defensive. Um, I'm kind of okay doing that in my preface because I know that they have um, limitations and emotional drawbacks that are keeping them from becoming better writers because their belief system is broken. Because what a lot of other people are talking about in terms of writing books is really bad advice, but it's heavily internalized about you know pure art or artistic production and, and whatnot. So even if I have a book about how to write better books, I have to address the limiting beliefs that authors have. And so by like in the preface, by really pushing into that limiting belief, um, I'll definitely get people's attention. But I did keep it really short. Um, the introduction, I've just moved some of my stuff around, but I've decided I'll focus mostly on the art and craft of writing and the difference between art and craft. There's a lot of different ways to approach this situation, but that's basically what the point of this book is about. Um, and I'll talk about the difference between, you know, writing for people versus writing for yourself. A lot of people get angry because I say, um, when you consider yourself an artist and you write the book for your inspiration, that's actually um, selfish because you're not, like when you think about the money or the market, it just means you're thinking about how to provide value to other people. Um, and it's a good indication of you know, not only getting paid for your work, but also writing a good book, writing a book people like and enjoy. I think art has to matter to other people. So I, I do include some, um, some really good emotional letters I've gotten from other people that really tap into the pain point or the fears. Um, or what I really should say is the objections. So people have raised objections because my work hits them the wrong way, um, which is great because then I know what their objections are and I can try to solve them in the beginning. So even if I tell them there are rules that will help your writing, in the back of their mind they're probably already coming up with objections about how they are, you know, they don't want to write commercial fiction or nonfiction, they don't want the lowest common denominator, they want to be artists, they want a great work of literature or whatever. Um, so I really have to address that because that's holding them back. So I'll raise a few probably emails I've gotten or reviews I've gotten and then go through and dismantle them point by point. Some of the questions I've gotten on my Facebook group. Somewhere in the introduction, it's messy, but I do have um, several different places that have a bit of my personal biography. So I need to go through and edit this clearly. Um, and I'll start with the art and the craft. I'll start with probably the objections and then I'll lead into, you know, I figured this out firsthand, right? I have firsthand frustration with this when I started writing because, and I'll go a little bit through my personal hero's journey and some stories leading to um, what I had to do to solve these problems for myself and how I've started building resources that have helped lots and lots of people, dropping in a little bit of social proof or reviews from people who have used my resources and been happy to kind of prove that it works. Um, and then I'll go into what you'll learn, how this book is organized, and finally, something like an FAQ, which is just really fast, you know, last minute um, stuff to make sure that the right readers are there. So like people at the end of my introduction, people will still be asking, is this book for me? Is this book going to work for me and my problem if I'm, for example, you know, trying to get traditional published? Um, I should add self or trad publishing, people will be asking like, is this book right for my plans and my books and everything? And I want to make sure I address those really quickly at the end of my introduction. And then I also started mapping out my first chapter. I'm still a little unsure of exactly how I'm going to go about this. Um, 
what I have right now is a whole bunch of stuff about the creative act of production, um, which mostly comes from another book I was thinking about writing that was Creative Confidence, um, which is a neat book with some really cool historical research from books that are not popular. Um, I'd kind of love to throw those in. I don't know if that would make an entire book anyway. It was always meant to be like a short book. So I might include some of it as just a really tight chapter. Um, part of the problem is I don't want to dump a bunch of actual research. I don't want to be presenting arguments in the brief ways or the introduction. I can present data um, and I, you know, there's content there, but mostly I'm overcoming objections, um, hitting the emotional pain points, letting them know that this book will provide answers. I'm not telling them what those books, what those answers are yet. Uh, so like I said earlier, chapter one is a good place to have a really deep emotional epiphany bridge or story um, to hook them in deeper. And I do have all this really great content about creative fear, um, which is a little bit out of place here, except it'll be reaffirming a lot of the stuff that I'm doing in the introduction. Um, in the introduction, I'm basically saying you know, I'm right, you need structure, this is going to help you. Um, and I hint at, at social proof and stuff, but I'm not laying out a full argument. And they may not be convinced, they may still not be listening. They, they may trust me enough to be like, okay, I'll give it a shot, but they may not be totally sold on my methodology yet. So in some of the research I've done about creative production, um, I've figured out that all creative fear has two sources. And so it might be smart even before I get into, you know, what is a story, um, which was going to be my first chapter was like, okay, what is a story? How do you even start thinking about um, writing a book? That's That would be a fine chapter one, um, but I might postpone that and do chapter one this way instead, because if I start with all creative fear has two sources, I can try to tie it back in with um, the art and craft. I can reaffirm why the craft is important. Not only will it help you to do a better book, but it will significantly help with writer's block and procrastination and fear. So if I can tap into, you know, um, these are the fears and frustrations that authors already have. And this book and the plotting and the guidelines and the templates, um, they will help you overcome the fear. So it's a little bit, I can, I can get them more deeply invested in the outcome. I can really show them how important this is. I can also drop in some amazing historical research, which not only hooks their attention and makes them, it makes the book a little more remarkable and memorable because they're being introduced to new, valuable, cool information, historical trivia um, that they've never been introduced to before because it's not really available. Um, I can also drop in like a personal vulnerable share or whatever. So I can do a lot of things in this first chapter which get them more excited, um, they trust me more, they're listening to me more, they're, they're paying more attention. As long as I can do that well in a way that expands the introduction and then leads into the, the first chapter. This could almost be like a whole separate introduction, although like I said, you, you don't want to be it developing arguments in the introduction. That's not what it's for. So you want to save your your real, like I, I'll drop in some famous quotes about writing that everybody already knows and expand on those a little bit, um, but I'll save the real research and the argument development um, probably for chapter one to stress again the difference between craft and art, um, how this stuff is really important, how it's going to help you, and then I would move into some things about what has to happen first. So the first things that we need to do to get rid of this creative fear or procrastination. Anyway, that's my current outline right now. Um, of course, this stuff could all change once you actually start developing it. I hope I've given you some food for thought um, and some resources when you're thinking about outlining your nonfiction book. I do have blog posts on Creative Indie and um, courses on writing and stuff that have all of this in greater detail. Um, I will probably actually 
um, be giving away at least one of my writing courses for free as a pre-order special um, because I'm really trying to push pre-orders for this book. So if you're interested in going deeper, uh, then you might want to pre-order because you'll also get some videos about nonfiction. But the book itself will have the heavily digested, organized, cleaner version of all of these tips and cheat sheets and stuff. So it won't be out for a while, but um, that's going to be the best way to start figuring out how to write a good nonfiction book on purpose. Um, I may make more nonfiction specific resources later. My next big course will probably be more about the nonfiction and the business side of it. If you have any other questions specifically about nonfiction, feel free to post them in the comments.